Hey everybody, I'm back, and this time I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. I wanted it to look more like your table instead of the way that I normally animate things. The name of this episode is... What do I do now? I have all this stuff. Well, I made a big episode doing all the math on the septillions of options available in Street Masters, and I think that was the wrong approach for new people. Uh, what I really think is, once you get all this stuff, it can be daunting, it can be intimidating, and make you think, oh no, there's too much, where do I start? I might not want to play it because there's too much stuff. I'm going to show you, it's a real simple game. You can play through everything in it, it's not too much. You can play every single character, you can have a great time, and you know, you go from there. There are stories, there's other cool stuff, lots of different options, all kinds of crazy things you could do, but nothing that you have to do, and uh, it's a fun deal. What do you get when you open the box? Well, you get this beautiful rules of play rule book. And if you set that aside, you get a stage. You get some heroes. You get the most important thing in the world, which is a turn card, which keeps you organized. You get some dice. You get all kinds of tokens. Decks that go to stages. And you also get decks that go to bosses you get lots of fighters I think uh, two dozen if you get the stretch goals um, there's under a dozen I think maybe eight if you get just the core box I, it's hard for me to remember a ton of other tokens more dice and uh, some other types of options that's pretty much all you need if you chose to buy the uh, place uh, placemats what do you call them the, 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 is it placemats? They're mouse pads, basically, but they tell you what to do and they organize your uh, fighter area. Just your fighter area, nothing else. Um, I think they were 10 bucks or uh, somewhere around that range, and you probably get them from the uh, Blacklist store if you didn't buy them. If you bought the game retail and you wanted to buy some upgrades, you could probably get it from there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what you use. Oh, and loot cards, those two. Um, start by opening the rule book just to kind of take a look at what everything is. There are these snap-on bases. You're going to use them on your enemies for our purposes in this tabletop simulator. Um, we're going to be using these colored tokens. You can get this color, uh, this tabletop simulator mod as well. It's in the workshop under Street Masters demo. Uh, they made it themselves. It's not like you're stealing or anything. This is made for uh, promotional purposes by the guys uh, or requested by the guys at Blacklist. So check that out. You get your basic rules. Uh, I'm going to go over a few different things, um, but it gives you an idea that there are... Oh yeah, I guess it says uh, how many... You get eight stage decks, four enemy decks, 12 ally or rival cards, uh, a bunch of story cards, all that kind of cool stuff. And uh, that's your basic box. This is going to be your rules for basically everybody. Um, and the golden rule, of course, is what's on the card supersedes what's in the rule book. Just like every game, um, they're, they're, you know... That's what the cards are for, to make things different and make it exciting. Um, follow along. It says modes of play. Just play through a regular game, arcade mode, your first game in. Don't worry too much about it. Uh, let's go over this way. Um, the breakdowns of the cards, we'll be able to do it here. So, um, as you can see, there's a regular side and there's a charge side. If I do it over here, there is the deck, there is the card. If I flip the card, there's the charge side. So that's kind of how we'll make it work here. If we have a boss, there's a boss. If we have uh, enemy deck, enemy deck, stage deck, see it says stage. And same thing over here, we got some extra fighters. Kyoryu and Megan are the ones in this example. Following along some more, uh, it breaks down the boss, it breaks down the minions, all that cool stuff. Read through it uh, if you can and you'll more things will make sense. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you, what the first thing you should do is uh, pop this stuff out. Only take the cards that look cool. Because just like when you play guitar, if you get a guitar that looks cool, you'll play it. If you pick out the fighter that looks coolest to you at the beginning, then uh, it'll help you when you're a little frustrated and uh, going through it. Put everything else back in the box. Take out one of these big tiles. Big, beautiful tiles. It's got all this crazy stuff on it. Um, these objective tokens pop them out. Uh, these defense tokens, pop them out. 
damage tokens, pop them out, and of course you're going to need dice. How many dice do I need? I don't think you need more than five or six of these white dice ever for anything. Um, and you can have maybe a dozen is even overkill. Five or six is about all you really need for the most part of these uh, uh, different uh, hero dice for fighter dice. And you absolutely need this card. This card tells you everything. On the back of this card is, it's all red, it's enemy turn. Front of this card is all green, it's your turn. Breaks down everything real nice so you can, uh, can go through it. Now, if you go back to the book, there's, things are in weird places. This is the same basic setup as what we have down here, um, except there'll be minis and enemy figures. Instead of these tokens, in Tabletop Simulator, it's just so much easier to see everything in token form. Where I'm going to keep it in that uh, that way. Uh, and then the rest is just a breakdown of uh, how the rules work and all that. I'll talk about it briefly. The stuff you need to know the most, uh, different damage types, uh, punch, kick, grapple. Then there's general, random. Random comes out basically to being like you roll one of these white die if you need a random thing and then it uh, will make an assignment. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be general, and then it has to use up whatever, um, uh, if it's an enemy, like a minion or a boss, and you do general damage to them, it, you'd have to use up whatever uh, tokens they've got for defense. If it's you, you can make it and a decision whether or not you're gonna keep and uh, accept the damage or use up your defense tokens. That part's up to you. Uh, and then defense tokens, when you use them to defend, they become power. And then there's some interesting thing on attack that we'll come up with later. Uh, for the most part, take out your tile, take out your boss. So this handsome fellow Dimitri, his face looks uh, a little happier on his token, but uh, otherwise it's this grim fella. And pull out his mini, you put him in the place that looks like a skull. Um, pretend he's a member of the Expendables and they love the skulls and then you set him on there if you see underneath these guys they have the crate uh icons over the hexes see underneath bam bam then uh what you do from there is set the five crate tokens or the, uh, there well, they're going to give you these loot cards whenever you land on them you don't have to waste an action to pick them up you just walk over them and you can pick them up and they're useful for a lot of things. Then you pull out all your various minis for this faction, for the Brotherhood. You just look at the ones that look like uh, the characters as you see them. Anastasia's got a gun, so she's got a gun. Drago's a big old beefy guy with a bald head. You look for the bald guy. This guy looks like Zangief. You find the guy who's got the mohawk. And they're in the little plastic trays. Everybody's made out of gray plastic, so you uh, will use the rings that are made out of plastic or silicone uh, to differentiate them from there. So you're pulling all that stuff out of the box as well. I know it sounds like a lot, but just keep kind of going in order. You can rewind this, you know, you'll figure that part out. And uh, then you need to make a decision on who you want to use. We're using the Brotherhood here um, because that's what's suggested, what's simple. And what they already had programmed into um, Tabletop Simulator, but you don't have to. Anything that is uh, gray on the back like this, that has an icon, not a face of anything, but an icon, is an enemy deck. You can pick whatever you want. Some are harder than others. Your first one through, Brotherhood's fine. Um, it's fine. Stage. Stages do various things. Uh, the stage setup rules and cards. Flip this over, you'll see. Um, there are rules that tie to the icon. So not only does it say in the little corner here, like here it says Gone Ballistic, it'll say uh, Gone Ballistic and show you the map on the card itself. Pull one of these out that matches with the backing. Um, put the rest away. If you want to use Gone Ballistic, that's fine. It'll match up to this example. And at least one fighter, whichever one you think is the coolest, like I said. So if you want someone who's fairly straightforward, Kyo Ryu is pretty, pretty straightforward. If you want someone who's a good backup for uh, he's uh, very much a damage person. He's got a little bit of healing and uh, a little bit of defense. Megan has some uh, offense, but she has a lot of ability to do uh, defensive things. But she's very much isolated to kicks as opposed to being able to do punch and grapple 
uh, in addition to it more effectively. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so you got all your decks out. Shuffle them. So this loot, shuffle that boy up. Uh, your fighter deck, shuffle that boy up. Your regular, shuffle that one up. Don't do that necessarily for the rules just yet. We're going to have to see what's going on for the stage. It says, reveal cards from the deck until 1p objective cards are revealed. In this circumstance, you would normally um, shuffle because you don't know which one it is. It's not asking for a specific one. It's going to be a random one. And in that case, it's already been chosen for us. It's going to be purple and yellow. And that corresponds to the purple and yellow objectives that are already on the board. If they are in their inactive state, that would be their active. See how it's got a full color ring around it? That would be active. And if it's got a gray ring, then it's inactive. Um, you follow the rules. You put it into place. When it says, uh, put the revealed objective cards into play, it means the cards are in play, but now the tokens are in place. Usually, it'll be inactive. It'll tell you it'll if it's active. If it is active uh, side, uh, you know, they just flip it over. But if it doesn't say, tell you anything, set them in inactive. And it, this is what it does. The boss runs around and tries to pick them up. This sits in your stage area. So you have your table area set up. So left to right, the first one that's going to play, that's your stage area. This is a fighter uh, play area, threat area, etc. This is the enemy play area. This is the stage play area. They're different. What do we do from there? Well, uh, we put everything back into the stage deck, so that would still be more shuffling. We do the same thing on the boss. Uh, if we had to pull anything out, if we had to give him any gear or anything like that, it'll tell us here. And uh, since that's not the case, it means we have to shuffle. So we're going to shuffle, 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 shuffle. Make sure everything's nice and good. What does all this stuff mean? 20p. 20 means 20 per fighter or 20 per player, if it's one fighter per player, it's up to you. So he's gonna have 40 health because there are two fighters. So he's gonna have 40 health. You don't put 40 uh, right now unless you really, really want to because it kind of gets in the way with the stacks of tokens doing the wind down. But if you prefer to wind up or wind down instead of up, that, that's up to you. The four means that he rolls four of these dice, these white dice when he attacks. And uh, there's no uh, regular defense tokens on his card, so he won't start with any by default. You'll see some characters that do. Uh, let's flip Megan back over so it's back to normal. Everybody's set up exactly where they should be. Uh, you see these little player joysticks? That's where you set up your fighters. It doesn't matter which one you put them in. That part's up to you. It does matter where the loot goes and where the objective tokens go. Uh, then, what do you do from there? What do I get? What blah, blah, blah. Everything starts with this card. Everything ends with this card. This card means everything. And, uh, that starts with the threat, threat base. Uh, every time a player begins their turn, we start from scratch. If you're going to use simultaneous mode, which this allows for, as you see here, you, I think you have to have Aftershock, uh, to get the tokens, but... Honestly, the rules will not disallow you from doing things in simultaneous mode. That's up to you. I would recommend for your first game, playing it through with the basic rules, one or two players, that's it. And then uh, seeing if you can beat the game from there. Um, all right. So it's our first turn. Our first fighter, let's say, is Kyoryu because he's on the left. And in America, we read left to right. Um, that has nothing to do with racism, sexism, whatever you want it to be. It just, he's on the left, and we'll pick that one. Every spider begins their, their game with four cards in their hand. Okay? All right. Now, we kind of want them to be different car types of cards. Uh, so that one's a tactic. That one's an attack. That one's an attack. And that one's an ability. So we have a good mix. We'll take a look more in depth as to what they are, but that's how our our hand is going to start. Uh, and then we're going to do the threat phase. Uh, we don't have to refresh anything, as it says. 
where we're going to draw and resolve one enemy card. That's these guys. So we're going to pull it, flip it over, see what it says. Trusty Kevlar gear. That gear does not go into our area. We just happen to pull it. It goes into Dimitri's area. It means that if he has less than five do uh, defense tokens when he his round starts, he's going to gain three random defense tokens. That means he's constantly going to keep getting defense even if you keep attacking him. So you're going to have to constantly do at least three attacks to him every round to try to whittle him down and uh, do what you can strategically to defeat him. This can be problematic. There are characters that can get rid of gear. Um, I don't think either Kyoryu or Megan are one of them. For sure, Natalia can do it with her disarm ability. Uh, so if you're going to play through by yourself this type of character and you want to get rid of their gear, use Natalia. Um, then, I'm using the right side fire turn card just so you can see everything on the left, but it doesn't matter. Fighter turn cards are the same. Um, then you perform each of the following steps in order. Move, sorry, in the order of your choosing. Move, card, action. So, whatever order you want, that part doesn't matter. Move, card, or action. Okay. Card step and card action are very, very different things. Card step means you play a card from your hand. If it's a tactic, like this shockwave, that is a persistent effect. It remains on the uh, in the game. If it's an ability or an attack, it plays one time and that's it. Some people have had the question, are attack cards the only attack? No. If you look at the a regular card here, it says action, attack for two. Oh, sorry, I should move the, the frame down so you can see it a little bit. Action, attack for two red dice. This is also an attack. So both the card and the action on the card count as attacks when it says so. Uh, if it just does damage, like this ability says, discard two defense tokens and heal. Well, if it said, take two damage and heal, it wouldn't be an attack. Or give two damage to an enemy and heal, it wouldn't be an attack, because it doesn't say the word attack. It has to say the word attack. You can deal damage without it being an attack. And that's gonna happen in various places. Um, let's talk about strategy a little bit and storytelling. He, has an ability to, if you look closely, it says gain one power for each Tempest card you control. The Tempest, as you can see, it says Tactic Tempest. So for each one of these he has, at the end of that regular attack, he'll gain power. He uses up power, he charges up. His internal storm is running muck on his insides and he's gaining power and he's unleashing power and he's doing devastating attacks with his lightning abilities. It's part of his storytelling. Um, that being the case, you can also see that his action has a, a different type of attack. This allows him to target an enemy two, uh, up to three spaces away, and you can power it up even further by using up additional power. This means he's using like his lightning in uh, some capacity, rather than just doing a punch and absorbing and generating more lightning. Storytelling. If you're doing your uh, uh, Adukin or uh fireball or whatever his his thing is then uh that's what you're going to get out of it um you're going to be telling his story through his fighting style based on his cards and as you play through so be, feel free to make noises you know make little lightning sounds or whatever uh when you do his types of attack or uh, charge up or feel free to um i don't know what are the dragon ball guys do when they the world gets destroyed and they lift all the rocks around them and all this stuff. That's what's going on. Same kind of deal. Or you could faint. Faint means you discard the card, but you get to use the ability. He'll gain two power or heal two damage if you want to get rid of this card. Why would you ever want to get rid of this card? Well, you see how it has a star uh, next to the word shockwave? That means you can only have one of these cards of the same name in play. So that case means if you had additional ones in your hand, you would use the faint ability and then play the card because you didn't have any other options uh, going on and you still wanted, you didn't want to waste your card step. And uh, that's what it helps you out with doing is giving you something 
for having the extra card in your hand and uh, allowing to discard it. This doesn't work if you just use it for a different effect that tells you to discard a card from play. Uh, it only works if you use the faint ability itself. Okay, we are going to put it into our fighter play area, which gives us a Tempest card, which is cool. Um, that utilizes our card step. I'm going to use leave my hand over here, and uh, I'm just going to set a die on top to tell you that we finished our card step. We haven't moved at all. Uh, I think it would be in our best interest to get close to an objective that he might go after. If we stand on it, he's going to have a hard time picking it up. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my move step to walk three. Okay. Now, if you look at the card, it says move up to three spaces. That's part of the move step. Okay. I have lots of options uh, from there now. Uh, I can gain two random defense tokens. I can perform an interact on something. Right now, if you uh, look at the stuff going on, there's an interact uh, that says if you are in a space with an objective token, you may pick it up. I am not in a space. I am adjacent to a space, but I'm not uh, in exactly the same space. So uh, that being the case, uh, I can't pick it up just yet according to these rules. Whew, what else can I do? Well, maybe what I want to do is start learning to defend right away. Because if I start defending, I can use that to turn into power and Kyo Ryu likes to use power. No thing in the book is going to tell you that. You just have to kind of learn it on your own. So that's how it is. How do you decide which random defense tokens to pick up though? Well, that's what these die do. Okay. They have random sides assigned to them, and they are the same as what the same information on the sides as what these defense tokens have. So I'm going to just go ahead and roll them, and it's going to give me foot and grapple. So I'll take the grapple, drop it off. There we go. And the foot, foot kick, whatever you want to call it, that's what it is. Okay. And that's going to use up my action step. What you typically do in this uh, area here is you now move on to the react phase. But I don't have anything in my threat area because the card that I pulled, the threat card I pulled, ended up in the boss's area. Okay? So you skip it. If there's anything you can't do, you skip. Uh, except draw. So draw, you skip if it tells you that you can't draw. But if you run out of cards, then you would reshuffle and then draw a card. You reshuffle all the decks anytime you run out of cards, unless some effect otherwise tells you that the game is busted or you lose or you win or whatever the case is, because that can happen too. So we're going to draw a card. In this case, oh, we got another, another the same type of card. So we're going to have to do something uh, else other than uh, play a card unless uh, we're in a good position for doing something like that on the next turn. But we're done, and we're going to flip his card over. Next, we're going to start with Megan. Same thing happens with Megan. Everybody starts with four cards in their hand. What the heck happened there? I don't know why that flipped that way. Okay. There we go. Alright. She has an attack. She has a tactic with a chi. She has another tactic with a chi. And if you look, it says chi at the top. And at the bottom it says interact and channeled. Exhaust and channeled. So lots of different options are available there. And on her main card, you see that an attack is two red dice, and then you may result the channeled effect on any chi card you control. So if you control it, which does not mean it's in your hand, uh, control means that it's down here, then uh, 
you can do one of these channeled effects, which is deal a direct damage to an enemy engaged with you on this card or heal a damage on this card. She gets free damage. It's not an attack. It's just free damage. Uh, and she gets free heals. That's a pretty cool thing to have. Um, she's going to need to draw uh, an enemy card first, though. Wow. We got another gear. We shuffled this one, right? Did we? Looks pretty shuffled to me. Okay. Uh, then that just means that another gear came out. He is going to be very hard to beat. Uh, we need to somehow uh, hit him. <laughs> uh, this RPG, uh, he's going to choose a nearest fighter and try to attack uh, each figure within four spaces. So if we ever get within four spaces of him, um, he hits us and we discard a card. That's going to... Cards we control are going to be uh, our tactic cards. So as we hit get hit by him, we're going to be disoriented. It's going to put us off guard. Um, the big rocket went off. Maybe your hearing's he's still ringing. Whatever the case, the storytelling is on that. And uh, we're going to lose some of our... Our, our abilities that sucks but it is what it is you know you got to do what you got to do all right we pulled the threat phase now we need to act we can do something uh about it we need to hit him pretty thoroughly because he's got all this kevlar he's got all this other stuff going on um our best tactic at this point just because of the stuff that's on the board is just a full-on rush of the boss so that being the case one two three Let's try to get as close as we can to him on that end, which uses up, we'll pull a die here. Our move step, we need to figure out what card we want. If our enemies engaged with us, we get to draw one card, gain a defense token from them, and heal one damage. But right now, at the beginning of the turn for free, we get a random defense token. I think that's the tactic I'm going to take. Um, if you look further at Barrier of Will, it has an exhaust. We can use that exhaust right away. Uh, you and each fighter within three spaces of you may gain one defense token of your choice. So we're going to rotate, which means exhaust this card, and we have to pick what type we get. Uh, that's cool. Let me explain something. This shockwave, when it does the attack, see the fist icon in the upper left? That means it does fist damage. Whatever you roll, which has this uh, shield on it, you're going to gain fist tokens. His main attack is also fist. So he's going to gain fist tokens. He's going to have a wide opportunity to gain fist tokens. For Megan, she's got feet. She's got a lot of kick attacks. So she'll get a lot of kick tokens. Strategically, in this circumstance, I'm going to choose something that is not a kick token for Megan. And I'm going to choose something that is not a punch token for Kia Ryu. Because I think that he'll be able to pick up more on his way. Or on his own. We'll just mark off the card step. And uh, we'll fill up our hand here. Alright, so anyway, it's all all our stuff's here. As far as our action goes, we haven't done much of anything, but I still think it's going to be a good idea to have uh, random defense tokens right now because we won't be able to necessarily use them or stop and get defense later based on the cards we pulled. If there were enemies here, I would be trying to go after minions, but right now, we've just buffed up the boss too much that we have to start going after them. So I'm going to pull two. Here's my die. My dice. I'm going to roll them. I get two grapples. Okay. All right. And that would end her action step. She's got a lot of grapple right going on right now. That's just my strategy. Set up. My first turn, everything's there. 
I can't do anything about the react phase because we pulled those two cards and all that's left for us to do is draw one. So we'll add this attack to our hand, okay? We flip our card over to the red side and now we have to go through this stuff. Enemy turn is first. The enemy is always gonna begin left or right with the boss. Now, there might be enemies down here in your uh, threat areas, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this persistent enemy play area, uh, which is up here. Activate is the thing we're looking for. Dimitri attacks. Uh, if we look on page 9 about attacking and dice, if you follow along where I have it highlighted, it says, unless a card effect specifies, a figure may only attack engaged targets. And if the figure is unengaged, it is not able to attack. Figure includes boss. Okay. So that means he does not have anyone in this general circle around him. So he's not engaged. So he can't attack. It says Dimitri attacks. He can't. We have a, more words. If unable to resolve his equip effect, then retreat one space. Equip. Discard the top card of the enemy deck, then put the topmost gear card in the enemy discard pile into play. If no gear enters this way, Dimitri gains one random defense token. So, we got to make a discard pile, okay? So, that's not an equip, or that's not a gear card. We may have all the gear cards out. This is not a gear card, even though it's a tactic. Uh, this is gear. We have to put it into play. And Dimitri attacks each fighter engaged with him, blah, 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 blah. So we'll figure that part out in just a second. Uh, we have to retreat in one space. Retreats always go in a straight line. Just because he stands on the loot space now, he does not get any loot. Enemies never pick up loot. Only fighters pick up loot. All right. And he does not gain a uh, defense token because gear was put into play through this function. He's done. Now we have to work on left to right, all the stuff that is in his uh, play area, same as if it was in the, uh, the uh, fighter play area. First one, if he has less than five defense tokens, he gains three random defense tokens. Well, he's gonna have to get three random defense tokens. Fist, fist, kick. So, set two punch tokens and a kick token on top of them then we move over here if this card has no power on it place one power on it where do you get the power ones from we'll flip over the defense tokens uh, da, 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 da. you can't do anything else any if, if no fighter was attacked shuffle the uh this card into the enemy deck to deal the nearest fighter the fighter nearest Dimitri, one direct damage. Okay. So if we shuffle this back in, we have to do one direct damage. It's like he just chucked that knife at somebody. They're equidistant, so you get to pick who it's going to be. Kiryu has uh, more health. He has 20. Megan has 16. But... Whenever she uses her channeled effect, she heals. So she heals more frequently than him. I'm going to go ahead and put one damage onto Megan. Okay. So that was one direct damage. She doesn't get to block it because he threw a knife at her and it like hit her in the shoulder or whatever. He's done. Enemy turn is done. So now we have to go, as you can see, to the stage deck. This begins with an activation phase. The group activates each card in the stage play area from left to right by resolving its activate ability. Stage card is always first. Resolve the objective effect on the inactive objective nearest the boss. The purple one is inactive. It is one, two, three spaces away and one, two, three, four spaces away. The green one is not present. Is that the green one? That's the blue one. For some reason, it looks green on my screen. Blue one is not present. Green one is not present. Just this purple one is present, and it's inactive because it's on this side. It hasn't been flipped yet. Let me grab some water real quick.
I'm doing a lot of talking. Okay, so he's gonna go towards this in a straight line. Uh, he can only move three spaces. If it were in the objective space, the boss picks up the objective. He's not close enough to do it. It's too heavy. He doesn't have any leverage, okay? In order to pick up this weapons cache. So he sits right in front of it. We're all right near each other. We're all right next to each other. Whoo, things are getting heavy. All right. So uh, that being the case, next we would look for another activate ability. There aren't any on these cards. So we're done with activation phase, then we're going to draw and resolve a stage card. Supply truck. Shuffle each minion in the enemy discard pile back into the enemy deck. Then each minion in play gains one random defense token. So this is just, we're going to have to go back through. We're going to take these minion cards out of the discard. We'll flip that over and drop that there. And it said shuffle. So we'll shuffle that back in. So a truck is just run by with a fresh new batch of minions and uh, more ammo for everybody or, I don't know, knee pads or something. And uh, yeah, there, luckily there was nobody in our threat areas for that additional stuff to go through. So we're just going to discard it. It had no real effect. Luckily we got that early. Okay. Now, where do we go from there? We end the phase. Each flighter flips the cards and we need to make a decision on who's going to go first. When these cards flip, at, no matter whose turn it is, you're going to start, uh, whoever turn you, you choose, you're going to start um, rotating everything back to its normal state. Okay, anything you exhausted is now no longer exhausted. Uh, put the dice back if you were using those as counters, uh, you know, pennies, whatever you want to use uh, as counters. Uh, just to show that you've used those steps up. And uh, let's take a look at your hand. All right. Oh, let go of them. All right. There we go. All right. Tabletop simulator is a little weird at grabbing stuff sometimes. So we have a tactic uh, that we can use. We have an attack we can use. We have another attack we can use, and the same barrier of will. Uh, I like to have as many tactics out as possible because they always seem to be useful for something. So I'm going to throw for my card step, I'm going to put projected chi into, uh, into play. So I will be able to use it in the future. I'll gather up my hand. That was my card step. I'm going to use the move step to step on top of the uh, objective. So now he can't pick that up because I'm standing on top of it. Which is a move you can do. You know, that part's up to you. And then I'm going to look at my options. If I interact, I gain one defense token from each enemy. Uh, I draw a card and heal a damage. So I can do that, or I can hit him, which will allow me to still heal a damage or deal one direct am damage to an enemy engaged with you. So the real net difference is I get to do some hits on him, or I get to soak away defense uh, and, and heal something. Hmm. Let's hit him. Let's try to hit him. So I'm going to hit him with, uh, let's do a regular attack. Okay. I moved. So yeah, we'll, we'll mark that off. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. We forgot to pull a, uh, a threat card. Uh, let's just pull the threat card now. It's not the end of the world. Don't do too much. We pull a green Anastasia, uh, green Anastasia is here. Since uh, closest was one of these two standing here, I'm going to say it was this one. You drop Anastasia in play. She has four health, but she starts with a kick and a grapple token. So let's give her the kick and grapple tokens. Okay, so she's sitting there. 
Uh, that complicates things a little bit, but not not the end of the world. Um, I'm still gonna, you know, camp on top of this thing, and I'm gonna hit for two. So let's take two dice. Let's roll them. I got a defense, which will give me a kick. defense as I just stated earlier and we got a crit which means we need to roll one more time now uh, we got another crit exploding dice is what this is called and uh, we get to do that again roll another time okay one two three hits we did three kick damage he had one kick defense so that is now going back into the pile and that leaves him with two damage we did some stuff we can do more stuff it's still our turn does not count as a card action for us to rotate and exhaust force of will so uh we get two defense tokens one on each fighter uh randomly or sorry we get to choose these right yeah of our choice uh i don't have any punch so she's definitely going to get a punch defense token he currently doesn't have any punch, so it would just be smart to at least fill out uh, what he's got available. As long as they stand close together, her barrier of will will help him out. There is nothing else on uh, projected chi that we can use because we used up our action here. Now we need to continue. React. Anastasia is going to go. What can she do? If unengaged, She's not engaged with anyone. There's no one standing next to her. Uh, da, da, da. Deal the fi nearest fighter within six spaces of the enemy one direct damage. See how she's got a gun? If no one's around her, she's just going to start hitting people. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the line, right? Nobody's at that line. She's out of range from what she can hit. Maybe she's just not that good a shot. Uh, if unable to do so, move three spaces to be within uh, six spaces. If engaged, attack, then retreat. So she's going to try to hit you and run away, or she's just going to try to get just close enough to do it. She's going to move up to six spaces to be within six spaces of the nearest fighter. The way I read that is once she's within six spaces, then that's when she would stop. So one, two, three, four, five, six. She would only need to move that far. So that's where she's going to go. She's within six spaces currently. Okay. Then we're going to draw a card. We got another projected chi. There's only three in the deck. Uh, we need to figure out something else to do <laughs> with those cards. We'll figure out what happens in a minute. We'll flip our card over and move on to Kia Ryu. Kiryu doesn't have anything to reset, which is great, but he needs to pull a card. Steely Defense. Each fighter activates one Drago card in the threat area if able. If no Drago in play, Dimitri gains two of each type of defense token. Oh no! There's no Dragos in play. Uh, but he's going to get two punch, two kicks, and two grapple. All right, uh, and then we're going to move on to the act phase. So we'll put out our, our cards that are in our hand so we can make some options, figure out what we're going to do. We have an ability that allows us to heal. We don't take any damage to worry about. We have attack cards that allow us to attack. Uh, and we have shockwave, which allows us to do a different type of attack. Um, an enemy up to three spaces away. Uh, and you can discard power. We don't have any power just yet. So it's not much we can do. Let's move so we can get within striking distance of Dimitri. We're going to punch him in the face. Or kick him in the face. Or punch him and kick him in the face. Or grapple him in the face. Whatever we want to do. Uh, let's start with... But all of these things would allow us to discard power. We don't have any. 
but if we attack with this one, we gain one power for each Tempest card you control. So it makes sense if we use our action step to attack. Okay, we'll use that action step to attack with this uh, Channel Tempest ability. And let's, uh, let's roll these guys. So that does two damage. Fist damage, right? Fist damage. And he had one, two fist defense tokens. Then we gain wind power for each Tempest uh, you control. We have one Tempest card, as you can see there. We're going to flip that to power. And cool. Uh, now we can strike. Uh, what do we want? Well, it makes most sense for us to use the kick or punch options and whittle down kick and punch as much, much as possible so that um, Dimitri or yeah, is hit by Megan's uh, kick attack and Kiyoriyu's punch attacks. We don't have many people that do grapple, so it just mathematically wouldn't make much sense for us to do anything other than this Sky Strike. So uh, we can discard any amount of power after we attack to deal one general power for each power discarded. That's another option. General damage. General damage would just peel off uh, whatever tokens are left anyway. <sighs> we don't have a lot of stuff to do, so let's just use Eye of the Storm and to gain a number of defense tokens of your choice. Okay, that part's fine. We have two of them anyway. Let's do two attacks. Let's see what happens when we put this guy into play and we use that as our card step. Roll. Okay, so I get two grapple defense and I did one grapple attack. So he loses one. I gain it because I'm lazy and I didn't want to put a bunch of different stacks to doing different things. And that's it. Then, uh, to continue out the card, uh, you may discard any number of power to gain an equal number of defense tokens of your choice. I got plenty of defense tokens, so I'm going to keep the power where it's at and uh, just call that a day. Now, we have to react. There's still nothing in his threat area, uh, so we'll draw. We got another shockwave, which means we're going to probably want to start using up faint abilities uh, when we end up with uh, no other options uh, or we really need it. This goes into the discard. There we go. And we flip. The enemy is going to take their turn again. So he gets his turn. Uh, Dimitri attacks. He is able to now since he's engaged. Who is he going to attack? You pick. He's just going to attack. Doesn't it say it attacks each person, doesn't say it attacks whatever, it's just he attacks. Then Dimitri is going to retreat one space. He needs four, so we'll take these four back. We'll roll them. Uh, punch, grapple, punch, kick. Uh, I want him to hit Megan. Nah, I wanted to hit Kia Rio because I want to turn as much as possible into power. Uh, so that was punch. Take one, flip it. Grapple, take one, flip it. Uh, punch, he takes the damage from that. And kick, flip it. So he now has a total of if I mouse over, it will tell me. No. Uh, I think he has four. Four power. Might be five. One thing to notice, as soon as you hit your threshold, in his case six, you're going to flip over. Okay? You don't have a choice. Immediately spends all of the tokens of power uh, and flips over. Immediately. Instantly. No matter where the turns are. It immediately happens that way. Whenever it gains power. Uh, then... We're going to look at how many defense tokens Dimitri has less. If he has five, 
he has less than five. So he has exactly five. So we don't have to worry about that right now. Then with RPG, uh, if this card has no power on it, which it does, otherwise chooses the nearest fighter, he's equidistant and discards one power to attack each figure within four spaces of that fighter. Each fighter that suffered damage this way discards one card they control. Um, it's going to attack each fighter anyway, so we'll just we'll just attack. Okay, it's uh, it's one attack per fighter. Yeah, it's one attack per fighter. So the way it's going to run is he has four dice as part of his attack, so he's going to hit Kiryu first. He's going to do kick, punch, grapple, punch. Uh, the grapple is the only one that he has left for power. That gives... Let's just count them all out. Make sure he hasn't met his threshold. Okay, he's just one shy of the threshold. Um, and he's going to have to take three damage. So... Now it said the target was to set the attack up to, to fire off his RPG. Which means Megan's going to get hit for a separate type of attack. Also for four. Punch, grapple, kick, punch. Punch, grapple, kick. We don't have an extra punch, so she's going to take the damage. Okay. She flips with four, so if she gets one more power, she'll flip to her other side, which will do a more powerful attack, generally. As we continue, um, yeah, then State's turn. Resolve the effect. Uh, he's supposed to try to walk towards this objective. He can't walk any more towards, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wasn't he supposed to retreat one? Yeah. So he would have retreated one, or even in this direction probably would have retreated one. Uh, still does the damage, that part doesn't matter. And... Just making sure... Sorry. Uh, chooses his nearest fighter and discards one power to attack each figure within four spaces. He hits himself. Because it's each figure. He hits himself with that RPG for kick, grapple, kick, kick. Uh, kick, grapple, kick, and he didn't have a kick on him, so. He's got terrible aim, but it's an RPG. He's blowing it up. He's got defense tokens all the time. He's not that worried about it. He blows stuff up. He's a big man. Um, yeah. He'll move again, because it's still closest. It's still inactive, even though she's standing on it. And that means we draw a card. Weapon Jam. If at least one figure controls an objective, we do not. Uh, this card deals damage, uh, deals the figure with the most objectives to general damage. Uh, figure, it could go to boss, it could go to you, but nobody controls anything because nobody picked it up. Uh, then the boss deals each fighter one direct damage for each objective it carries. He doesn't have any, so nothing happens. Later in the game, it sucks when you start picking stuff up, but right now, it's not that big a deal. So that satisfies the stage turn. That satisfies the fighter turn. We flip back over. Uh, there's a couple other things I wanted to show. Um, we're going to use at the beginning of turn. Yeah, at the start of turn, she gains a random defense token. Uh, let's roll it. She gains a foot. One. Okay. And we'll rotate back to square. Okay. And she's going to have to pull. I'm like using Megan first. Uh, she's going to have to pull her threat, which is the purple Anastasia. Uh, Purple Anastasia is now closest to this side, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, sorry, it is this one. 
from her current position. Yeah. Okay. Um, purple Anastasia gets a foot and a grapple. Okay. And then we'll spread out our cards and make some decisions. I don't really need to move or do anything like that just yet. Um, I get free moves. If I do that attack. Uh, interesting. Uh, a cool thing I could do, if I wanted to exhaust now, I could gain the random defense tokens, then use uh, Gale Force to attack, and on the next round, I could put Barrier World back up. So you can exhaust first, then uh, do whatever effects that cause the discard, so then you get the full effect of it. But you can only place one card at a time, which would mean at the beginning, I would not pick up the uh, random defense token as normal. That's just something you have to, to think about what you want to do. Uh, I'd probably use Projected Cheat instead, uh, since I'm not really using the Interact just yet in order to um, nail Gale Force, since I end up having both of them in my hand. That's just a strategy thing to do. Uh, Kyuryu, once all the stuff goes through on his, his space, you basically rinse and repeat, jumping back and forth, doing different things, having enemies attack, don't attack, until you finally get to uh, enough damage where you beat the boss. I'm not going to go through full playthroughs, basically just first couple turns and how you get started, where the tokens go and all that. Keep fighting. A couple things. If you did happen to walk on top of a loot card, or if you did defeat a minion, then you get a, uh, a loot card. And they can be used by you, they will go into this little loot area, uh, to enhance an attack. So this one says, discard this card to add plus two uh, red dice to an attack targeting a figure adjacent to you. That's any kind of attack, it doesn't matter you know, what it is. Uh, some of these, let's see if I can find one here for you. Turkey dinner is an awesome way to heal. Like cash will exhaust a minion. So these minions have activates. If you were to exhaust them by bribing them with cash, then you would do the same rotation that you do on your own figures uh, or on your own cards. And they would not activate instead of activating they would just go back to normal okay so that's one thing that that can do there are some effects that allow you to do that uh not that one i don't need a soda brass knuckles okay discard this card during your punch attack to add plus two to the attack so it has to be a punch attack so this is kind of useless for megan because she does kick attacks but it would be great for Kyuryu if he got a punch attack. So that's a little bit of clarification for you as you pick up these various uh, types of loot or you do various types of damage. Um, there's some interesting wording on various cards. Uh, I wanted to show, see if I can pull one of them. Stage dive, uh, this is a tactic here. It says your attacks deal plus one kick damage. Just says your attacks, not your kick attacks do one. So even if you did a punch attack with a card like that, you would just gain an extra kick. Uh, after attacking this enemy, you may discard the card to deal one direct damage to each enemy engaged with you. So you're going to run at an enemy and then hit all the rest of them. This requires two different actions you need to do an attack with another card or with uh, your basic action. And then you can discard this card to do extra direct damage because you just hit everybody in like a whirlwind kick type thing. You just, your arms and legs flew out and attacked everybody. That's the basic storytelling. Otherwise you'd leave it in play in order to do extra damage and it's uh, channeled effect even would allow you to do more kick damage and, and uh, extra enemies engaged with you. There's lots of reasons to keep stuff around. You make decisions on if you want to keep it in play, discard it for its effect, back and forth, that part's up to you. What can Kia Ryu do? 
Uh, let's see if we pull another one of his tactics. Riding lightning before each of your attacks. Doesn't matter if it's a card, doesn't matter if it's uh, putting a, a card step card into play, or if you're doing an uh, action on a different card, you can add extra power to it uh, to hit uh, for one extra red die. And at the end of the turn, you gain more power. So that means you're just constantly able to generate more and more power and eventually hit stuff um, from afar. Uh, or a Bakudan. This attack deals general damage and may target an enemy within six spaces of you. So this is basically, you just have like a spark that jumps off and bumps people and does one general damage. And that's just from an exhaust. So every turn, you got all these Tempest cards out. You're generating tons of power. You're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And you hit him. When do you win? When you punch the uh, boss in the face enough times. In this case, for 40 damage, he's got uh, three damage so far. So it's a start. Um, what happens when you defeat a minion? You pull their tokens off and uh, go from there. So if you have any more questions, you should go to the Facebook page. You should go to, for Blacklist, you should go to the Board Game Geek page for Street Masters ask questions there the guys are super informed and uh you know even the designers up to this point are still answering all of your wonderful questions and then while you're at those two places you can see that they have created videos for creating foam core inserts to get you started if you got aftershock they also show you how to organize the cards in your Aftershock box and set up the game within three minutes. So that part's pretty cool. This is just a, a quick overview on how to do everything. I created my own 3D printable card files uh, for card holders, uh, little uh, trays and whatnot. If you get the redemption pack, keep the little plastic tray that everything comes in because it's awesome. You can use it as a dice tray. You can help organize yourself. I've used it in so many different other games. It is the best randomly a designed card tray I've ever seen, use it, utilize it. There's every reason in the world to do so. Um, what else do I have to say? If you have any questions for me, you can put those in the comments. You can like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, I typically put these in both the Facebook group and in YouTube, but YouTube's a little easier to uh, hear because the audio is louder and uh, the comments are easier to see and go by. That part is up to you. Um, all of the card trays and videos and other stuff that I've done for every single fighter stage and everything else uh, animated out, not in this format, but in a different format that is uh, one of my own design, are in the BGG video section, the Facebook video section, and here on YouTube where you can subscribe and go to the playlists and go through all the Street Master stuff, and that will give you a general idea. Right now, everything that was made and before. 2020 is made before my copy of uh, Street Masters Aftershock arrived, so I don't have all the new errata cards. It may look a little bit different from yours, but the basics of how the game plays is, uh, is there for you. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this game as much as I have. It is a lot of fun. Um, if you play through and you see where all the, the decks and organized stuff ends up going, you'll have an idea of how you want to paint it. If you do want to paint it, if you don't, how to organize it so you can get to everything. Maybe you'll want some uh, more silicone uh, base toppers or whatever in order to tell the little minions apart. Uh, maybe you'll just want to use, uh, uh, I don't know, a permanent marker, maybe even. And you can run around the bases if you don't like to paint. You can do whatever you want. I'm not going to make that decision for you. Um, whatever is cheap and works for you is fine. If you have a 3D printer, then you can use my STL files that I added so that you can organize your box. Uh, Brady and Adam uh, showed everybody how to fit within bags, not you know perfectly creating all the minis, but uh, in uh, their own little little you know fiefdoms or worlds of protection. No, no, no. They don't get magic bubbles. They uh, they fit in bags uh, if you want to, and you can put everything from the first Kickstarter into just. Uh, two boxes, the stretch goals box and the core box. And that includes all of like Twin Tigers and um, Redemption Pack and all that. If you got Aftershock, then you have the Aftershock box and everything will fit in there. And you can follow their videos on that too. Uh, I think that's everything I have for new people. You can rewind this, feel free to do that. Like, comment, uh, share and subscribe if you want to help me out because 
you found this uh, video to be useful to you in some capacity. Liking means other people will see it. Sharing means your friends will definitely see it. And subscribing means that you'll see more stuff whenever I upload it. You guys have a good one.